Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Provo, Utah. So, uh, it's been a little bit since we've been on the bike together, and uh, I took a few weeks off from, you know, doing any kind of moto vlog stuff for after I got back from vacation. Uh, mostly because I really wanted to edit the footage that I got from vacation um, and I was worried that if I collected more by like doing other moto vlog stuff that I would like use it as an excuse to not edit the footage that I had. Um, and so I specifically gave myself some time to get that edited. Now um, as of the time of recording this um, I have a proc I have about one more part um, to edit uh, from my big road trip um, and I do think one more part should be the finale and then that'll go up now as of the time of recording this uh, at home my computer is uploading um, is uploading part number three and so this weekend I am hopeful that I can get part number four the finale of that edited and then at some point get this footage up um, but yeah, well, welcome back. So there's been a few changes. Um, firstly, today we are going to through, I believe it's called, uh, that one might be called Provo Canyon. I believe on my road trip, I, I accidentally called the Price Canyon Provo Canyon. I don't technically think it's, I don't know if it's called Price Canyon. Let me just point out. Um, I don't know if it's called uh, Price Canyon, but the canyon that goes south. But the one that we're headed to, I think this one is actually called Provo Canyon. Um, you know, don't... Uh, take that with a grain of salt um, but there is a very pretty drive headed up to Heber City Utah um, there's a very pretty drive headed up to Heber City Utah um, and we are gonna go through that canyon but on the way back we are going to uh, we are going to go a different way on the way back um, on the way up we're gonna go through that canyon but about about halfway about halfway along the trip um, about halfway along the trip, there will be a turnoff, and we're gonna we're gonna go down that turnoff, and we're gonna see what it's all about. Because uh, there, I was looking on Google Maps last night and double checking that it's a road, and double checking because I thought it would be cool to make more of a route, like more of a round trip kind of deal uh, for this video, rather than doing like a going one way and then doubling back the exact same way. And so, plus, I think it'll be cool for me to see some new so some new parts um, of that road because I have taken that canyon trip set a lot of times but I've done done it several a couple of times I think on my motorcycle um, but this time of course is the only time I have ever recorded it anyway so that so that's one of the changes is our route today also um, because my my vacation footage was of course for uh, at the moment three parts but probably gonna be four total um, because it was four total um, I, I imagine that most of my moto vlogs will actually not be um, in parts. I imagine there will be one part, like that'll just be it. Um, but because my vacation footage was of course so big because there was so much footage, that one had to go up in parts. Um, most of the time I imagine there'll be, it'll be one video. Uh, like this one, I think it's incredibly likely that this will just be one video. Obviously because I'm, because I am on whatever road this is, State Street University in Provo, you must hit every single light red and all the lights in Utah know me know me by sight so they're like oh he's coming turn red anyway regardless my 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 whining and complaining about red lights um so anyway so our route today of course is one of the changes that is you know obviously that's different um but one of the things that's different is i have a new helmet so um i mentioned i believe on my, on my main road trip footage that my helmet the one i was using was a temporary setup and i did show that off at the beginning of all the footage um i showed that off that it was going that it was a very temporary setup that it was not going to be permanent um well i've actually switched to my more permanent setup um and not, not gonna lie i am feeling pretty proud of it now if i'm really responsible and mature maybe i'll take some pictures with my phone of basically what i've done and then i will Will show the show off the pictures as I'm talking because I do know I do know how to do that in editing like do picture in picture um, which I do use fairly often um, especially in my moto vlog stuff um, anyway so maybe I'll take some pictures and hopefully you're seeing that on screen right now um, but what I done what I did is this is my new permanent setup um, my new helmet is a beautiful red that matches my bike almost perfectly, um, which is very exciting. Um, and then I did go, and this one is a name, like more of a name brand helmet. It's not cheap. It, it wasn't like cheap garbage like the other one that I bought. Now, the other one is not garbage. It is just cheap. Um, for a cheap helmet, it is pretty well made. Um, and, uh, and it does a great job having Bluetooth and I, I use that one as my, as my personal helmet. That's the one I use when I, when I use the bike to commute 
to work. Um, that kind of thing. So that one is my personal helmet and it does get used for, for just me cruising on the bike. Because the thing about having a setup on the on the front part of your helmet is you don't always want this like, you know, you, do, you don't always want this, this massive setup, like GoPro setup all over the front of your helmet if you're just gonna take it to work or whatever. It, it would look weird. Um, I think I'm in fifth right now. It's again, it's a little hard when you have to just count in your head and you're having to do commentary at the same time. Anyway, um, but yeah, and so uh, I, yeah, I would have to be in fifth. I would be too. I would be revving too high if I was in fourth. Anyway, um, but yeah, and so my new purpose. So that, so that, that's one of the bonuses is that if you get two helmets, you can have a Moto Vlog helmet, and then you can have a personal helmet. So my Moto Vlog helmet. This is my new permanent setup. I am hoping you can hear me. This is the first time I have tried to use it, but my setup did great in my other helmet, and this helmet is a lot quieter than my other one was. Um, and so I imagine you probably can hear me pretty well. Um, anyway, and so this is my this is my new permanent setup. So because this helmet was more name brand, I was able to go to ChinMounts.com and get a mount that was made for this helmet um, which is which is amazing I mean having a, a, a mount that just perfectly sits flush uh, that just perfectly sits flush with the whole helmet is amazing um, and uh, it is super super fabulous so I did this is the first time using the new setup so but, the, but one of the things is the mount is perfect and it look and it's mounted perfectly on the helmet my only thing is I because in the last setup the the my the GoPro was pointed just a little bit higher on my helmet so I was able to glance and like look down and be able to see the battery life or things like that whereas with the new setup I can't so what I had to do is you can because the GoPro when you hit start recording and things it beeps at you when you turn it on it beeps at you so basically I have to just use like the auditory like I just have to listen to it and listen for the beeps to make sure it's recording because I can't see the I can't see the actual screen um, um, because it's too low on my helmet for me to be able to do that um, but hopefully it's centered there shouldn't be any kind of vibration I really did tighten the, the little knob um, and so there shouldn't be any kind of vibration um, but otherwise the, the the basic idea of my last setup is the same um, app approximately like having the little uh, audio adapter on the side of the helmet that all part is the same but this one it's much cleaner looking um, and the little audio adapter was kind of a weird story because the thing is the, the helmet helmet's curved and so finding a way to get a very flat non-curved audio adapter to mount fairly flush to a curved helmet is really weird so what I actually did is again and I'm hoping you're seeing an on-screen picture of some of the things I did but uh, the on so I did have this little like like mounting tape kind of deal um, and that's what I used to mount the audio adapter um, and so what I did is I actually got like those little I think they're called floor sliders but you put them at the bottom of like uh, like uh, chairs and like furniture to get them to slide on carpet easier um, well what I did is I actually bought a little pack of those and then I used I used a knife and I cut like a layer off of off of it because it's just like foam it's just padding and so I used my I used my knife and I cut a layer off and then I cut like a, another half layer and then I stacked those on top of each other and then I and then I mounted them to the bottom of the audio adapter so it kind of more or less made, made a curve um, it's very haggard but for now if for now it is the setup down the road I will probably look into finding a more flush way of mounting it making it look neater um, I've heard of a lot of people using like a JB weld and things like that and uh, epoxy but I was concerned about about using stuff like that because I was concerned like what if I mess it up you know like what what if I mess it up what if I you know or what if it looks like crap and my helmet is so pretty otherwise like as you know my helmet is gorgeous and one of the other things that I did to my helmet see now he gets over anyway one of the things that I did to my helmet is uh, is I put a mirrored visor on it and so because the mirrored visor is on it it's like that way it's my home my helmet is chrome and red and it matches my chrome and red and and with black accented bike and so it matches the bike great which is awesome but the thing is I didn't want to scuff up this helmet by putting all this JB weld epoxy stuff and what if it comes out badly and so the other thing too is I thought you know is like down the road I'm probably gonna have to I'm get probably gonna have to replace um, the audio adapter at some point like at, at some point things are gonna wear out right so or, or just like maybe the setup has to change maybe I just decide I want a different setup and I have an idea on what to do like whatever happens the point is I'm the setup might not be that way forever and I didn't want to lock myself in 
to a setup that looks bad. I didn't want to ruin the helmet, so this little haggard, fairly haggard setup is what I'm using. But from a distance, it doesn't look bad. Like when you're up close, you look at it and you're like, wow, what the hell is this? But when you're farther away, you, you're, it's not bad. It's not horribly obvious looking. It doesn't look terrible. And so that's, so, so that's the setup we're going with. Um, and you know, and I and, and I'm feeling pretty, and I feel pretty good about it. I, I feel like that it's a, it's not not a bad setup, and it doesn't look bad. I'm a little worried that it's not super stable, but like at the same time, the other one did, was, didn't feel super stable, and that stayed through there and back to New Mexico. So, you know, it's like I feel like it's probably in my head. Um, I feel like it's probably in my head about its instability. But regardless, um, but yeah, and so all, all together though, it did come out pretty well and I am pretty happy. So this will, like I said, haven't tested this setup before, but as you can see, um, now getting past my helmet set up into the actual where we're going. So Heber City is super, super pretty. And as you can see, the air quality today is beautiful. The temperature is lovely. It's gonna be a high of like 80 something degrees today, but at the moment it's like 70 something. Um, and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous out here right now and so it was just begging for a bike ride and air quality in Utah is a big problem half the time the air quality is really bad because of all the people that have moved here and everything else and so because of it it can, it can make it very the it can make the smoke the air quality be very bad and it's like it's like living in LA it's not great um, but on some days like today in the last few days the air quality is perfect and totally fine and so as you can see you can see forever now i'm hoping that the camera is not tilted down too low it, it looks pretty good and it is on super view so i don't think it'll be i don't think it'll be unbearable um i don't think it'll be unbearable i almost missed that biker wave can you imagine anyway and so yeah uh, it was so i don't imagine it'll be that bad but yeah it'll be a super pretty drive and i'm super super excited about it and yeah we're gonna cruise through the last time i was through here it it was windy it was a hurricane on the way back um, on the way there it was it was nice but on the way back it was really windy um, and that was not awesome and so uh, but but this time it's not windy at all today and so it's just lovely it's absolutely lovely and so I imagine we'll be seeing lots of bikers I imagine I'll be doing lots of waving because it's biker etiquette you can't miss the biker wave so um, and so that's just that's just how it is man anyway and so yeah we're gonna be cruising through the canyon um, and yeah, I am really excited about our little detour that's different for me. I've done the canyon trip. I have not done the little last part of this trip that we're gonna go on. Uh, have not seen that. So we will see how, how it all goes. But as you can see, it's flipping lovely out here. And I was looking at, around the area and there's actually a lot to do around here. There's like a, really nearby, there's lots of hikes. And I would love to go on some hikes and actually and, and do some of that stuff. So I do think it's very likely that we will do those, that I'll do those and I'll do them, I'll do them with my GoPro, that kind of thing. And I think that'll be really exciting. And yeah, and I think that'll be super exciting and, uh, and I hope you guys are, are looking forward to it. Because yeah, I think that'll make for some for some good videos. Um, so one of the detours that we're actually here for. So because of the temperature, I'm wearing my fingerless gloves, as you can see. Um, and one of the detours is there. There is a large motorcycle like shop place in Draper, um, and it is open today. And so I most of the time I, I keep thinking I want to check it out, but I keep hesitating because it's way up in Draper, and I live in Springville. And so it's kind of a fair. It's a fairly long way, but because because of the way we just happen to be going today, um, the, the road that it's going to dump us out on is actually in Highland, Utah. And Highland, Utah is not too far from, from Draper. So uh, on the way back, part of the detours of today is we are going to swing by that motorcycle place and I'm going to see if I can find some more, some better riding gloves. Um, these, my fingerless gloves are nice when the temperature is like, is, is warm and everything, but sometimes like, cause the other riding gloves that I got and this one you guys saw on the vacation, um, but I lost my, my, my red gloves. Um, I lost my, I lost my red gloves in New Mexico. And so I got these really bright, uh, like neon yellow, orangey looking safety gloves that are very bright. And all of that is fine, them being bright. But the thing is, like I care more about style than I care about safety as a lot of bikers I'm sure do. And I want my, my gloves to look cool, just like, the rest of, just like the rest of my gear. My gear looks cool, my helmets look cool. My bike, my bike lo lo looks cool, it looks bigger than it is and it performs above its pay grade I feel like. And I don't know, like I, I wanna make sure I look good and I wanna make sure I look good over like looking bright and easy to see. So 
because of that, I want I want a new, just like go-to riding gloves, just like my normal ones, to replace the the those bright neon ones that I bought. So um, now those ones will be used, but not for biking. They'll be used for like I don't know, like I'll just put them and use them for yard work or something. I don't know. And so, but my I do want new riding gloves. So, but I don't want to buy gloves on Amazon because I can't. You obviously you can't try anything on in advance at Amazon. You can't try anything on. And so you just like taking a gamble and I have no way of knowing if it's going to fit my large cinder block hands. And so because of it, I don't, I want to see if I can get something locally. So yeah, so on the way, on the way, I like back with this little incursion, we're going to swing by that motorcycle shop and seeing if I can find some better go-to riding gloves. And uh, yeah, I am super looking forward to it. And so hopefully I can find some and uh, that'll be a nice replacement now temperature wise right now it's lovely you can see like the river down there i mean you guys might not might not be able to see it but um but there it's just lovely right now and so the fingerless gloves are totally fine um temperature wise it's fantastic i i'm not wearing a hoodie underneath my my leather jacket um i took out the winter liner that's on the inside like and it's just fabulous so yeah and so i'm uh super super happy with our road trip so yeah i don't know how much we're gonna do together on camera um i I might check out that motorcycle shop off camera like I might just end the video before then I, I'm not sure um, but you know t time will tell time will tell and uh, we will see but yeah otherwise we're just gonna we're, we're gonna go cruising so I'm probably gonna unplug my audio and plug in my power bank to get my to get the uh, to get my GoPro charging while it's recording and yeah I will uh, I will probably I'll probably check in several times during this video so um, we will so I'll probably check in with you guys in a second although actually maybe maybe we'll stay on on maybe we'll stay plugged in for a second longer here because I want to talk really quick so we're almost to, to the turn off uh, that we will be on when we're on our way back so yeah, we will probably just be on camera for just a second longer. So technically the speed limit drops to 45 right here, but here, here's the thing, like no one, everyone in Utah, it's like a 60-40 split. 60% 60 of Utah drives like, like 25 over with no exceptions. And cops don't give tickets for anything around here, especially for speeding. And so like you have to be driving like a maniac to actually get a cop to care. And so the thing about the thing about like speeding is that like cops really don't care in Utah about speeding very much. And so the thing is, if you actually do like the speed limit, like if it's at 45, so if, if I slow down to like 50, like I, I'm gonna be tailgated. Like people are gonna run me off the road. So I'm gonna more or less ignore it, and uh, I'm gonna be doing more or less flow of traffic because I don't want to get rear-ended by a car that's gonna be doing 60 through here, even because I was doing the only guy doing 40. You know what I mean? See, I didn't miss the biker waves. I saw, I caught it. Anyway, so yeah, they're doing construction through here, as you can see. I don't know what they're doing, but you know, they're almost always doing construction in Utah. Oh, but that was the other thing I was gonna say was 60% of Utah does like, uh, you know, 25 over. The other 40% does like 10 under, and there's no in between. Like, you know, I'm like one of like four people in this state that does the in between. So, you know, it's not awesome. But anyway, as you can see, that section's really short, so it's like you can pretty much blow through it and ignore it. Anyway, so here's the turnoff that we're going to be heading on on the way back. Uh, that is 92. I guess it's like Highway 92, State Road 92, whatever it is. And that's our turnoff on the way back. So we will be back there. Uh, on the way back, we will be turning off there. But anyway, on to uh, Heber City.
Okay, welcome back. So, yeah, that's what I thought. I hit a bug with my, I felt him hit my knuckles as I was driving. <laughs> oh, and I felt, definitely felt a distinct splat. I was like, oh, that was a bug. And yeah, it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, so welcome back. So as you can see, that was a super pretty drive. I mean, as you can see the, you know, the, that, that canyon, if it is indeed called Provo Canyon, uh, very pretty, very pretty. And I'm doing, now the question is, am I confident enough that it's called Provo Canyon to put it in my, uh, oh dear, I think this is the one I wanted. <laughs> Hang on, no one panic. We have time, my friending. We're good, we're good, we fixed it in time, don't worry. Anyway, um, but yeah, now the question is, do I think I'm confident that it's called Provo Canyon enough to put it in my title? Good question. Anyway, um, yeah, so as you can see, that was a super pretty drive. Um, it's not, not super long, so Heber City um, is actually connected to more than just Heber City. Um, for those of you that are wondering, wait for it. So Heber City is actually connected to... Um, to uh, Midway as well, Midway, Utah. So Midway and Heber, now it's it's a weird mix around here because Heber and Midway are, are a weird mixture between like very rich areas, like you have to be loaded to live out here, uh, and like farmland, and then like a lot of like more like normal houses. As you can see a lot, like, like some of these are normal. There's also an increasing number of apartments and townhouses around here. And uh, I, I don't know, like I, I really like the Heber Midway area. Um, um, generally speaking, um, my only, my only thing is that it's very, it, I don't know, because I, the, one of the reasons I like it, um, 
is because it has that small town feel a little bit. Um, it doesn't feel quite as crowded as the valley down below. Um, and you know, and I'm, and obviously it's not right because it's not Utah Valley. So it is less crowded, but the thing about Hebrew and Midway is that it's not like it's not crowded. Like it is still crowded and it's still like still more so than I think you would want if you were really looking for the real small town experience. Um, you know, it is still, it is still crowded. And so that's kind of the, kind of the give and take there. So in case you're wondering what I'm doing, um, I was, we're more or less turning around and going back the way we came, but I was trying, I was trying to find a more of a scenic way of going back rather than just going the same, the same way we came in. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm kind of trying to find a scenic way on the way back. I have an idea of how we're going to do it. Um, but I'm, I am guessing, it's not like I looked this up. So I, I am guessing now keep now something else to keep in mind is that I'm not totally unfamiliar with this area because, um, I have mentioned before that I deliver Amazon packages and one of the routes that my, that my specific company delivers to, um, and I don't mean, I don't mean Amazon cause I'm not employed by Amazon. Um, because Amazon doesn't has employees, but they don't have drivers. Um, you, when you see Amazon drivers, what they are is they work for a company. Um, they work for a company, and then that company works for, like works with Amazon. So it's like I don't work for Amazon. My company works with Amazon, and I work for my company. Anyway, just something to keep in mind. Regardless, um, one of the routes that my company covers is uh, is Heber and Midway. Uh, we actually have lots of routes out here, um, and so you know, and so it is something that you will that you're gonna that you're fairly likely to get this route at some point and I've done the Heber Midway route several times um, and so you know it, it, it is different anyway um, but I have done this Heber Midway route several times and so you know it is it is uh, I am fairly familiar with this area because I have been through here you know like several times but um, but I just thought it would be kind of neat to have more of a scenic way of getting back and I think that I think we're in the right direction here because I think this road connects with the one we were on so I think we should be good to go I think I think but I just figured it'd be fun than me turning around in like a parking lot somewhere anyway but yeah I mean it's very pretty like I do think it would be it would be neat I think like in generally speaking to live out here um, as you can see the view is breathtaking as you can tell um, and this isn't even the most breathtaking part this is just a little bit we rode through if you like ride farther back like there's actually lots of crazy breathtaking views um, in this whole in this area and again it's it's very pretty but like my my part of my hang-up is that like okay maybe I could find like a townhouse or like an apartment and maybe some Somehow I could afford it. Um, the problem is now you now your commute is now very long because like my commute as it is isn't super long. Like if I take the interstate, it's approximately 17 to 20 minutes to get to work. So that's not terrible um, if if conditions hold out and it's not terrible. Um, if conditions hold out and it's not awful. Um, if I take the and but but the thing is when I'm on the motorcycle, I I don't take the. Uh, I, I don't take the the interstate on the on the bike most of the time. Um, it's not that I can't do it. It's not that the bike can't do it. I just don't love doing 70 on, on my motorcycle. <laughs> Honestly, I, I like driving it. I just and I, and I can do it. Obviously, I did it for I did it for the road trip, and it wasn't even that bad. But I just if I could have a choice, I wouldn't choose to do. Um, if I had a choice, I wouldn't choose to do 70. You know what I mean? I would choose to do like like 50, 55 kind of thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, and so for me, I get up. A little earlier and I take the back way to work and the back way is 40 is approximately 30 to 40 minutes um, but it and so yes it is double the time but I don't have to take the interstate and then it's much more relaxing for me regardless though we are on the right track because that's the road we need right there so yeah that sweet little turnaround that I did worked perfectly anyway and so but yeah but the thing is if I did ever actually move out here which yes that would give me some a little more space and it is crowded out here but it's not like you know valley crowded maybe it would be better but the thing is my job is in a, my job is an American Fork and and like American Fork Linden area so the problem with that is now I would have to commute like an hour and some change or something to get all the way to my job from here you know what I mean like I mean like I think it's like approximately 45 minutes Okay, I think he is actually turning. Hopefully he is, otherwise we're dead. Anyway, um, I mean, he had his blinker on, but you, I guess you never really know. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, but now suddenly I have to commute like, I have to commute a long way. <laughs> 
Anyway. There we go. I think I actually shifted too late. I should have been... Okay, good. We are in sixth. Anyway, but yeah, so that's the th and that's kind of my hang up with with moving somewhere this far is because like I don't know. I kind of I kind of would have to have a job or something that like warranted it because like I have done the kind of commute where you commute like an hour to get to your job. I've done that kind of thing, but it's not fun. You know what I mean? Also, it's 60 out here, not 50. Anyway, um, you know, I've done that kind of thing before, but it, but it, but it's not fun. You know. Like, especially with my job, I work four tens, generally speaking. Uh, I work four tens, and so it's like, so now suddenly I have, I worked like nine or 10 hours, and then I had to drive an hour, like 45 minutes to an hour home. You know what I mean? Which is like super not fun, you know? Like, I mean, who wants to commute that far? So I don't know. So it's like, that's my hang up. I feel like I would have to have a job out here. Like if probably, probably, you know? So, you know, I digress. Regardless though, we're gonna go ahead and head on back and uh, and we're gonna hit our sweet little turn off on the way back and we're gonna see what that's all about. I've never done it before, so this will be new for all of us.
Okay, uh, we're back. So here's the thing. Um, obviously, that there was like a like a not like a toll booth, but sort of less like more or less a toll booth. Apparently, to go any farther, you do it looks it looks like you have to pay. Um, the thing is, I looked at this thing. I looked at this little this little road on uh, what you call it on. Uh, on Google Maps um, last night, and I did see that little that little toll booth looking thing. Um, but on on maps, there was a sign on it that said uh, that said like um, like you have to pay at each individual trailhead. Like there wasn't going to be a person there waiting for you. Like you know you were you were allowed to go through. Like you know you still had to pay, but you would have to pay at the beginning of each different like area to go at. Like if you were gonna go to the falls, you would have to pay at the start of the trailhead for the falls kind of thing. And so I, I was hoping we could kind of squeak through. Um, I was hoping we could we could squeak through. I was hoping that we could kind of kind of sneak past and uh, and not pay because I'm not I'm not I wasn't gonna pay. You know what I mean? Um, I was just because I'm not stopping anywhere up there. I was just gonna use the road to go through just because it's pretty to drive on. Um, but I mean, maybe in hindsight, maybe I could have rolled up and asked, like, "Look, man, I'm not gonna stop." Like, but you know, whatever. It looks like like a like it looks like the road goes through. Am I allowed to just go? You know, maybe I could have asked, but I feel like it's it's more likely than not that he'll be like you know no idiot you can't do that or whatever and so so yeah we just uh we just flipped around instead so you know i mean it was still pretty it's not like it was a waste or, or anything because like obviously it's freaking breathtaking up here and it's interesting to to roll up here anyway um it's interesting to roll up here anyway partially just because uh just because you know like down the road i mean we might come back but this time actually to do some of this stuff um because i did mention falls like I'm, I'm willing to bet that's a pretty hike and uh and i do want to redo the hike for the um the bells canyon trail i think is what it's called but it's the one that i already have the irl achievements video on um i would love to go back to that one um and do it again because the last time i did it um i was in much different shape <laughs> um last time i did it i was in much different shape and it was it was much harder um i'm willing to bet this time it will not be that hard anyway i'm willing to bet that this time it will not be that hard uh and so i i, I do want, want to redo that one plus again to redoing it i would redo it with the gopro rather than with just my phone camera um so obviously that would be really different anyway and so it was still it was still worth doing it was still worth going up here and looking at all these like looking at all these pretty trees and everything else and you know it was worth doing it wasn't quite what i assumed would happen but it was worth doing so uh so instead what we'll do is we will roll back the way we came we'll go back to the that little area the, the little initial turn off um and then we will uh yeah, we'll go back to the initial turnoff. We'll continue going down Heber Canyon, or you know, like the you know Provo Canyon, Heber City thing. We'll we'll continue along our way. Uh, but then, and but we're, but I feel still pretty committed towards doing that. And plus, it's just nice to drive today. It's not as it's not as fun as it would have been if I had been able to you know to do it this way. And you know, if I if we had been able to do this loop instead of having to go through the city. But it's not as pretty as that. But it's still worth driving. It's really pretty out here. And uh, and heck, I'll probably just include it in the video, and we'll just call it you know. Because because that's the thing about having a moto vlog, right? It's just a vlog on my motorcycle, so it's like whatever it includes is totally fine. Because that's part of the that's part of the bit. It just you know it's just a vlog on the motorcycle, so whatever I do want, it's fine. Anyway, so yeah, we're just gonna roll on our little way here, and uh, yeah, and then I guess I'll I'll probably check back in with you guys at some point. But yeah, I'm gonna get things switched over. So the other thing I meant to mention too is if things get rocky, like if it's like I don't know, if it's like boy, these turns are real sharp. I keep having to have keep, keep having to brake to go down them. It's steep, my guy. Yeah, second gear's a little low, but third feels a little high, so it's like you, you can't really win. Anyway, um, I mean, plus two. I, I'm very, I'm a new dry, I'm a new motorcycle, <laughs> I'm a new biker, and so I was like, I haven't had my license very long, like you know what I mean. Like I haven't been driving a motorcycle very long, so it does make me more cautious than other bikers would be. You know what I mean? And in general, I'm just more of a cautious person than not. You know. So it's like, it does make sense. But anyway, um, but I meant to mention, if you see my hand uh, in front of the camera as I like reach up and doing something, you probably, you've seen it a couple times this video. Um, it, well, the, the reason why is because I'm using, I have to use one hand to try and switch from my uh, audio adapter to my power bank. 
Um, and so if it, you know, so if you're wondering what that's from, well, you know, that's what it's from. It's because I have to use one hand to switch it and it's really, it's difficult. So if you do see that and, we, and if it's annoying, I do apologize. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to my power, my power bank and then we're gonna continue rolling on and I'll probably check back in at some point.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are officially here at Cycle Gear, and we will see if we get lucky and they have what I need. Uh, I'll probably even include you guys on this journey because why not? So I will uh, see you guys in a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we got lucky. Check this out. Look at these gloves, man. They're so cool. So they're red and black. They match my bike colors. And uh, yeah, they're red and black. They have this armor on it, which is a, which is about where your knuckles are gonna sit. It's it's near, uh, not quite, but it's near. And then it has vents in it too, so it breathes better. And they're leather. And yeah, they're fantastic. So these will be my more go-to riding gloves. Um, and uh, when it's not really really warm, when it's really hot like now, like my fingerless ones are great. But down, but yeah, I did have luck. This store is super cool. They have lots of really great stuff inside. So something we'll have to check out. But uh, but yeah, otherwise though, I'm going to move on. I probably will not include you guys in the rest of my journey home. Um, I'm going to swing by and find some lunch right up the road, but then I'm headed back home and I might even take the interstate. We'll see. So more, it's more businessy going home. But anyway, I, uh, yeah, it was otherwise a really fun drive and I hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, I certainly did. It was not quite as the, the way back wasn't quite what I intended to do, but it worked out anyway. And this is a great store. I will probably be back if I need other gear, but anyway, that is going to call for this one thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed the content today and we will talk to you guys later